Etomics Kanatani. Good morning. It is June 21st, 2014. This is the summer solstice, the day that the sun is going to be closest to us um, for the entire year. And to me, that makes it an auspicious uh, occasion on which to make some changes in one's life. I'm going to make some changes in mine. What I'm going to be doing is adopting a new diet, a locavore diet. Uh, and I'm going to maintain it for an entire year. I attempted to do this diet last year and I think I lasted a couple of months before I gave myself some allowances that swiftly broke down my willpower and had me eating just anything I want. I'm not going to do that this year. I'm going to be pretty strict about it. The locavore diet means eating uh, and drinking only food products and ingredients and liquids and such that derive from my local area. Um, some people do this kind of a diet and they set the area at uh, 100 miles from their home. In Within that sphere they can acquire their food. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way and say that my area is defined by the Old Man River watershed which is part of Blackfoot territory. Um, so I'm only going to be able to eat and drink things that come from the Old Man River watershed. Now just in order to um, help myself along I've decided to give some allowance up front and what I'm gonna do is for each lunar cycle I will allow myself to select four um, types of food or ingredients that I can have that are not local during that lunar cycle and then um, in the next lunar cycle I can decide whether to maintain the, using those foods or select something different. Um, this gives me a little bit of a cheat um, but I think that will help me be more successful and it's not um, overboard cheat. Right, so for the most part my diet will be entirely local. Um, I am setting some restrictions though on what those four allowances can be. They cannot be tropical, um, meaning I'm not going to be eating any bananas, oranges, mangoes, any of that kind of stuff. Nothing tropical and nothing that has to arrive here via airplane or boat. So it cannot be coming um, from overseas. And um, preferably, um, whatever I choose for to eat during those moon cycles that are the cheat foods, um, preferably they'll come from a fairly close location. I'm thinking maybe like the Pacific Northwest, uh, even British Columbia, which is just right over the mountains from us. So that is the base. The basic setup is totally locavore. Um, but allowing for a couple of uh, cheats that are still um, within a fairly close distance, maybe a day's drive or so uh, by somebody in a truck, um, which I don't think is too bad. Now the whole rationale behind this diet is uh, to support the movement of food sovereignty. Uh, really today, if, we, if you look at things, we are in a state of famine and we don't even know it. Us modern people in North America are in a state of famine because um, we seem incapable of supporting ourselves off of the food um, that we grow locally. We are so dependent on the global food trade that um, uh, really if we if we took away that trade, um, there would be a lot of people dying. And so, um, just for the purposes of um, having that kind of sovereignty, um, where we're not dependent on the, on the food trade, that alone is good reason to adopt this kind of a diet. But more than that, um, the global food trade is responsible for huge environmental degradation. I mean, if I just look at my local area, we produce all kinds of um, alfalfa and timothy and canola, and and it requires, you know, an industrialization of the landscape 
where the biodiversity is stripped away and replaced with monocrop agriculture. Um, this is hugely devastating to the environment, not to mention all the chemicals that are brought in and uh, put on that landscape. Um, you know, it's, it's just uh, it's just a terrible cultural practice that we've developed um, in this industrialized society and that we don't need. We can go back to having and living off of um, what we can grow ourselves. It's not unfeasible. So I want to support that um, and I want to do it with my actions, not my words. So I'm going to take on this diet for at least a year. Um, what else? Oh, it, it is of course um, going to have some health benefit because when you're living off of local um, foods that means you're not getting anything really processed and if you're not getting anything really processed um, it, it's going to be much healthier for you so that part is a, is a big benefit but for the most part it's a it's an ethical issue uh, the rationale for why I'm going on the diet um, though certainly I won't mind gaining the health benefits so that's the parameters of it and it's going to be a challenge um, just a, a willpower challenge really uh, because all the um, means are there I just have to make use of them so we'll see what I can do you got your empanadas? yes I did these are the best empanadas ever these ones are beef and I got some chicken which pretty much looks the same but they're the best empanadas that they have here. They are very good. They're actually real Mexican empanadas because we don't have real Mexican food here <laughs> for us. <laughs> but these are the closest we can get. <laughs> yeah, so this is the farmer's market and we're just done. I've got two bags loads of, of vegetables. And uh, yeah, there's, surprisingly there is a, a good, pretty good selection right now. Of, it's early the vegetables, in even though it's early. Not right now. Okay, we are back from the farmer's market, and this is how I've made out for about seventy-five dollars. I was able to get a package of parsnips, package of Swiss chard, big bag of uh, potatoes, big bag of lettuce. Um, three packages of locally made beef jerky, a uh, slab of uh, locally made dill, dill gouda cheese, bag of radishes, bag of carrots, two different types of tomatoes, a couple of heads of broccoli, and some raw honey. All of this is local product except I did notice that uh, in both the dill gouda and the beef jerky um, there's an ingredient of salt, and salt is obviously not local. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a general allowance in my diet for salt. I don't want to do that with too many things, but um, salt is something that you know I really enjoy, and I don't think it's it would be too overboard to um, promote that as being something that should be maintained in global trade because everybody does need some sodium in their diet so um, I'm going to go ahead and give the approval for salt um, and not have it be one of my four cheats just give it a general general uh, acceptance yeah so this is how I made out and um, add this to some of the uh, local veg that's growing in the coulee um, which maybe today even if I get a chance to go out and start picking some of that and uh, should be pretty good for produce and then um, meat is readily accessible local local chicken beef bison what have you so should be fun Okay, this is one of my first meals on the new Locavore diet. I'm having a chicken breast with three organic tomatoes and some um, kind of cooked, half-cooked um, nettle leaves. 
Uh, these are stinging nettle. They're a wild plant that I picked myself. And actually what I did is I made a tea out of the uh, stinging nettle with a coffee press. Um, I recognize that uh, coffee beans are totally outside of the parameters of my diet. So now I can't drink coffee. Um, there are no co coffee beans um, that I know of being grown um, anywhere near to local. Uh, it's all tropical stuff. So I'm going to have to be on tea from now on. Um, and when I, yeah, I'll, I'll use mostly wild teas, I think. Things like sting and nettle that I picked myself. And then once you uh, steep the, uh, or seep the tea, um, I think it's a waste to throw out the leaves, so I'm going to go ahead and eat them like a cooked uh, green and get some uh, nutritional value from that. So this is my brunch and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, it's barbecue dinner time and I'm out on the porch getting things ready. Um, this afternoon I ate a carrot, a few more of those yellow tomatoes and a piece of beef jerky, all stuff that I bought um, at the farmers market this morning. I also had a glass of uh, homemade wine. Um, this evening's for dinner. We are eating um, chicken with corn on the cob. Um, both of these are local products. The, the chicken come from local um, poultry farms. Uh, the corn on the cob is Tabor corn, which is from here in the uh, Old Man River um, watershed. Tabor corn is actually a really famous corn, so we lucked out there. The, um, what I'm putting on the Tabor corn is a mixture of um, butter with some kind of uh, peppery powder in it. Now, the, uh, the butter is, you know, dairy. We have our own dairy, so that's local. I don't know about the uh, peppery powder, whether that counts or not. But running into these issues with spice, I don't know what, but uh, I don't think this is too, too much of a cheat, if it is a cheat. Um, it looks here like I'm drinking a Tsingtao beer. I'm not. This is actually a beer that uh, is homemade, that I made myself. I um, also have a uh, growler that I bought today um, that I'll probably open tonight and take a drink of. This is another a beer. Um, this one is made by the Wild Rose Brewing Company in Calgary. So again, it's another local product, although I'm sure it uses um, all local grains, but uh, pretty sure the hops have to be brought in from BC. So um, that kind of stuff, like with the with the wine and the beer, um, I might have to count that as one of my four um, products that come from the outside because with the wine, the grapes come from BC, and with the beer, the hops come from BC. So if I want to uh, have wine and beer, which I do, then I think um, I have to settle with uh, st those products coming from BC. Um, but yeah, otherwise this is a really good deal because this is a reusable bottle. Um, I, I, in fact, I brought it into the store myself and had them fill it with the Wild Rose. Um, that's the way that the growlers work. Uh, this is a new thing here in Lethbridge. I don't know, probably in other places this old hat, but here we just brand new got this system a few weeks ago where you can reuse these bottles. And again, that's better for, in terms of the ecological footprint, if they're just shipping a, a keg of uh, beer, you know, or kegs of beer here and there, and then you, you bring your own bottle, that's way better than um, producing a whole bunch of bottles and doing, doing it that way. So that's the food for this evening. I don't know if I'll have anything else after dinner for eating. Um, if I do, it's probably going to be a piece of the cheese that I bought today, and that'll be it. So day one of the locavore diet.